I guarantee you that this will be the best video that you've seen on how to find wholesale suppliers for your Amazon FBA business. Now I've helped over 600 people start and grow their own Amazon FBA business, many of them going from zero to over 100K per month in under one year. And one of the most important aspects of this business is being able to find profitable suppliers for your business. So in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. Now I've split this video up into three separate parts. Part one, how to find wholesale suppliers part two how to vet these wholesale suppliers and part three is how to contact these suppliers now it is not enough to just know how to find wholesale suppliers that is just one piece of the puzzle when it comes to the game of amazon wholesale you need to be able to find solid suppliers yes of course but you also need to be able to vet these suppliers to know if it is somebody we even want to contact if it is somebody that we even want to open an account with and also to make sure that they are a legitimate supplier that if we send them money we will get inventory in return and legitimate inventory and then once we know how to vet these suppliers we still need to understand how we can contact them in a way that we actually get a response back from them now let's jump right into the video let's talk about part one how to find wholesale suppliers now this is a very very important part of your business obviously but you need to understand that you need to have multiple different tools under your tool belt so that you can find a lot of different suppliers that maybe not the person next to you is able to find this is why in my mentorship program I offer 13 different supplier search methods but with that being said you don't need to have 13 15 20 different methods on finding suppliers you need to see which methods work best for you which ones you're having the most luck with and then you double down on on those methods and I think I'm going to give you two solid methods in this video that are really really going to help you find authorized legitimate profitable suppliers so let's hop into my computer and let me show you exactly how to do that now let me show you two separate ways on finding wholesale suppliers for your Amazon FBA business one of these ways is in my opinion the best way to find authorized distributors of a brand I'm gonna show you exactly what that looks like and then the second way that we're gonna talk about is the most efficient way to use Google as a supplier search method. So the best way that you can do this is you can go over to a brand website. So we're on Funko.com. And what we're gonna do is we want to find their authorized distributors that we can go and buy from and then sell them for a profit on Amazon. We also want to keep the door open to working with, let's say, Funko directly. So if that opportunity presents itself, we will obviously take advantage of it. So what you wanna do is you wanna scroll all the way to the bottom and you're gonna have a couple different options depending on the site. Sometimes you're gonna to need to go to contact us and you can try to search for it in customer service and I'll show you what that looks like too. But you would go to customer service or you would go to like a FAQ and type in wholesale or distributor. But for Funko specifically, what we would go to is resellers and some brands will have this straight on their website. So you can actually go and buy from Funko directly. Here are the requirements. If your business is based in the United States, you need to be a retailer with a verifiable brick and mortar location or your own active online selling site. So you actually have to have a website that sells the products on that website and Funko will sell to you directly, assuming that you meet these minimum requirements of 50K in a calendar year. Now let's say, okay, we don't wanna worry about that right now. We wanna just find the authorized distributors. What we would do is we would scroll down and it says, if you are unable to meet the requirements or provide business documentation, you have the option of working through one of our premier Funko distributors. Funko is telling us these are our authorized distributors that you can go and open up a wholesale account with and buy inventory from them. So then what we would do is we would go to Alliance Entertainment, we'd go to Diamond Com Comic Distributors, we'd go to EE Distribution, and then we would go and open up a wholesale sell account and see what kind of Funko products we can find from them. But because they are distributors, not only are we going to find Funko products, they are probably authorized distributors of other brands as well, which then we can go get that price list, put it in the software like Scan Unlimited, and then it would tell us which products are the most profitable and which products are maybe a little bit more close to break even or whatever it may be, and we can go and negotiate on those as well. So let's say we want to find the authorized distributor of a brand, but they don't have them on their website like this. You can still get them. You just have to know how. Over the phone, you can ask them 
who are your authorized distributors or via email, you can ask, can you give me a list of your authorized distributors? And the reason this works so well is because why wouldn't they want you to buy from legitimate sources? Most of the time, they're willing to give you this information. Sometimes you'll run into some suppliers that don't want to give you this information for some reason, but it doesn't make any sense why they wouldn't. You're going to go buy more inventory and you're buying it from the most legitimate source that they know has legitimate versions of their products. So don't be afraid to ask your supplier for a list of their authorized distributors or the distributors that they work with, because a lot of times they're happy to give it to you. Okay. So that is method number one. You're going to go to a brand's website. Then you're going to look on that website to see if they have a list of their authorized distributors. If they do not, you will contact them either by phone or by email. And you would ask who are their distributors and they would either give you a list or not. But this is a solid way of finding leads for different distributors. And again, because you're working with distributors, they're going to have a whole bunch of different products, different brands as well that you can go and source. Now, let me show you the second method that you can use to find other suppliers, either distributors or brands directly. Now this method is going to start on Google. And what I'll say about Google is it has really changed over the years in the past. Like when I was first starting out, Google wasn't the best place to go and find great suppliers. It was really difficult to find great suppliers on Google. But now I think a lot of suppliers have put a lot more effort into uh, presence on, on Google and SEO. So a lot more suppliers pop up. The way that I like to use Google is I like to niche down. I like to use the terms distributor or manufacturer, but now even with the terms wholesaler, you can still find good suppliers. So let me show you what that looks like. So in the past, if you would type in anything like like wholesale or toy wholesale or wholesaler, whatever it may be, it would give you a whole bunch of just random generic branded products that weren't really going to lead you anywhere. Even just by using the word toy wholesale, you can still find suppliers. Now it's not the best way to use it, but you can still use it this way. We're going to get into more effective ways of using Google right after this, but you can still go on here you can find empire discounts, uh, coal exports, fun express dollar days. You can find a lot of different suppliers you can then go and explore more deeply. Now, what I like to do is use it more targeted. So if I want to go for a broad search term like toy wholesale, I'm going to get a variety of different results ranging from Lego to Pokemon to um, whatever other toy brands there are out there. But if I want to specify really clearly what I'm looking for, usually that yields better results. So let's look into Lego specifically. So I use the term Lego distributor. I love using the term distributor. It just gives you a little bit better results. And I made sure that I included included the brand. So you can include brand distributor, or you can type in category distributor. So let's say we're, we're in the sporting goods niche, right? So instead of typing in sporting goods distributors, we can type in camping distributors, hiking distributors, fishing distributors. So we typed in Lego distributor and the first one that pops up is toy house LLC. So if we go to this supplier, we can see that toy house is the exclusive wholesale partner for the USA and Canada for Lego. So this is their exclusive distributor for Lego for the US. And you can see on their entire site that that's all that they deal with is just Lego products. Now we're not going to vet out this website right now, but that's going to be in part two what we do, but I want to keep showing you how to find suppliers using Google. So let me show you a different example. So like I said, you can type in brand distributor or you can type in like a subcategory distributor. So I typed in camping distributor so that we're looking for products that are more specific to the camping subcategory on Amazon. So let's just go through a couple suppliers and see if they're legitimate or not. Okay, so just to briefly cover this, we're not going to go super in depth into vetting just yet, but just to see like, okay, is this somebody worth even looking further into? So we can see that they have brands up here and we would go, okay, they have Garmin, they have um, Hummingbird, they have all of these brands. I'm not super familiar with the camping, but they have a lot of different brands that we may be interested in. So that's one supplier, the next one. Okay, uh, Liberty Mountain, what kind of brands do they carry? And we also wanna make sure it's not a retail website. They'll tell you in the about us page, Liberty Mountain is one of the largest wholesale distributors. Perfect. So you can see how the more direct your targeting is, the better results you're gonna get than just a generic toy wholesale. Now in the next step, we're actually gonna go over what it looks like to vet these suppliers out 
to see if it's somebody who's even worth contacting. All right, now let's talk about part two, which is a crucial step in this process, how to vet these suppliers. You're not going to contact every single supplier that you run into. Amazon Wholesale is a numbers game to a degree, but if we are taking a bunch of shots, we want to make sure that we are aiming at a correct target. We're not just shooting in all different directions and hoping for the best. So if you start contacting every single supplier that you run into, you're gonna be getting a lot of low quality suppliers some suppliers that should never have been contacted whatsoever, but there's going to be suppliers you run into that just, you don't need to even give them the time of day because they just don't fit your business model. This is where vetting these suppliers is a crucial step in the process. Now, keep in mind, the vetting process for a supplier will start from the moment that you land on their website and it will go on even after your first couple of orders because they can look like they're the best supplier in the world offering all of these great brands, but let's say you open up an account with them and they're just a nightmare to work with. You need to take that experience into account in your vetting process. So let's go over some real world examples of how to do this. So now let's see if we can qualify a few of the suppliers that we went over in the first part of this video. But when you're looking through a supplier's website, you want to keep in mind that first impressions do matter. Those first impressions that you get from a website is either going to tell you, yeah, I have a good feeling about this site. It looks pretty legitimate to me. Or it's going to give you some red flags that it's going to make you dig deeper and deeper into that supplier to see if they're legitimate or not. And we're gonna go over exactly what we need to look for right now. So the first thing that we want to see is that they're selling name brand products that we're interested in. We wanna source products that are already selling on Amazon that we don't wanna to have to go and, and optimize the listings a, a ton and run a bunch of PPC. There is a time and a place for that, but we wanna source products that already have that demand built into that product. So the first thing we are gonna do is we wanna look at brands. Okay, do they sell any brands that we are interested in. If you're familiar with camping and, and outdoors, like really outdoorsy stuff, you're familiar with all of these brands, great. There's a ton of brands here, okay? I'm assuming that these are well-known brands. The only one I know of is Garmin. So we're like, okay, awesome. They have name brand products that we know sell well. Now, even if we are unfamiliar, for me, this is a perfect example. I am not super familiar with the camping space. I go camping once or twice a year, no big deal, whatever. But people that live for camping, they're gonna know more brands than me. So what am I supposed to do? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type these brands into Amazon and see if they're selling to some degree. Some of these brands I may have never heard of, but they're selling incredibly well on Amazon. So just because you haven't heard of them doesn't mean they're not selling on Amazon. So you always wanna make sure you're plugging them into amazon.com to see what kind of demand we're dealing with. So the next thing that you wanna look for is you wanna look for the about us, just to get a little bit more information about this supplier. So okay, they've been around since 1981, wholesale in marine electronics, uh, supplier, 80 employees. Um, let's see, uh, wholesale distribution. Okay, we wanna make sure they're a distributor. We wanna make sure we can buy their products at wholesale price. So we just wanna get a rough idea of who they are, what they do. This is going to come into play when you are contacting them, which is part three of this video. Now, we also want to see a location. So we can see right here, they have an address. If they are a legitimate distributor, they should have contact information and they should have a legitimate address that you can go and plug into Google Maps and it will come out with their building. I'm going to show you an example of what it looks like when they don't have this and it is a huge red flag because if they are a legitimate business and they have a legitimate warehouse because they have all of these brands that they claim to carry and they've been around for so long, there is no reason why they shouldn't have contact information and a verifiable address that you can go plug into Google Maps. So we would plug these in to Google Maps, make sure they're legitimate. We have an email right here. You can also check their social media. You can check their Facebook, see if, they, if they're posting. You can check their Instagram, see if they're posting. You can check their LinkedIn. You can also go onto Google and look up reviews. So we just type them in into Google. We type in CWR wholesale distribution uh, reviews. We can see there's a review site here, here, and we can see they have some reviews here. If you can find them on Trustpilot, that'd be awesome. If you can find them on the Better Business Bureau, that'd be great as well. We just wanna, we, it's just something that we can check to just further legitimize that they are who they say they are. Here you can see a picture of their business. You can see them on Google Maps. Pretty confident that this supplier is legitimate. And then we can also go to their FAQ. Sometimes they'll answer a lot of our questions here, depending on the supplier. And then you would just go and you would contact them, which we're gonna go over in the next part of this video. So now let's go over the next one. So this is Liberty Mountain, another supplier that we had found uh, previously. And again, we want to see that they have name brand products that we are interested in. We want built in demand into the products that we want to sell. So we would just click on brands and there's a bunch of brands that are recognizable. Five Hour Energy, 
They have Adidas. Let's see what else they have. They have a bunch of brands, okay? They have Banana Boat. What else? What else? Benadryl. They have some OTC. Okay. Camelback. They have a lot. Okay. They have a ton of different brands. This is solid. This is great. And the, and the website looks awesome. So the next thing that we want to do, okay, let's go to About Us. Right? Is this a retailer? Is this a, a, a distributor? Is this liquidation company? Do they handle in returns? Like what, what kind of supplier are we dealing with? So we need to know that. We need to know these details. If you're buying from a supplier and you think you're getting the products new and it turns out if you would have just done a little bit more research, you would have seen that they only deal with used goods or liquidation or shelf pulls or damaged inventory, whatever it may be. We want to know all that stuff up front before we send them our money, okay? Liberty Mountain is one of the largest wholesale distributors of technical outdoor products and climbing gear in the US. Great. Fantastic. Then we would follow that vetting process over again. Let's check their address if we need to. And again, like I said, first impressions matter a lot. So if you get that first impression, you're like, this this doesn't look right. It would make you want to dig further and further into it. A site like this, it's pretty obvious that they seem as they seem super legit, right? But do your due diligence just to make sure. Also, if I wasn't clear, when you're looking for their address, if you're selling in the US marketplace, you wanna make sure that they're in the US so that we're not dealing with customs, we're not dealing with overseas shipping or anything like that. We wanna make sure that they're in the US. We would just follow the betting process from here like we just did on the last supplier. Now, I wanna show you an example of a supplier that is the complete opposite of what we're looking for. Right here on the screen, you can see this site can't be reached. This is sctopdeal.com. And this was a supplier that one of my clients clients reached out to me. He said, Hey, can you help me vet this supplier? And we went through the vetting process together. And I was just telling him, look, this is what I'm looking for. This is what I'm seeing. This is why you should completely stay away from this supplier at all costs because he was thinking, Oh, they have good deals. They have good brands, but this is the benefit of having somebody in your corner, somebody in your back pocket that you have access to at all times. Because then if he would have sent this supplier money, he would have lost his money because this site is not even up anymore. And I just checked this site probably like a week ago when my client sent him to me and now the site is completely gone. You can't find them anywhere. So this is just a screenshot of what their website looked like because I was taking screenshots and sending it to him, showing him, okay, look, this is what we're looking at. This is what I'm seeing. But this site just screamed scam, like not legitimate. So it says e-commerce wholesaler and they were catering to e-com um, sellers, uh, Amazon sellers, but they just had so many red flags. One, they did have some brands on there, but it just, the quality was just too low. Like it was just, it looked like they put this site up the night before. And then when I looked up this website online, it said that the website was only on for like a month or maybe a couple of months. But the big one for me was when you plugged in their address into Google Maps. On their website, they had a, a picture of a beautiful facility and on Google Maps they had a they were showing a building that was incomplete and it didn't look anything like the picture that they posted and also when you zoomed into that picture that they posted on their website of their facility you could see that it was a picture for a completely different business it was like a, a fitness like it was like a gym or a fitness business so it had nothing to do with SC top deal the second big one for me was when I looked up the picture their stock footage that they had of their facility on their website and I ran it through Google images. And it was actually the style, a picture from a completely different business that wasn't related to SC top deal. So in my opinion, this is probably either a scam wholesaler trying to just scam people out of their money, or it was like another Amazon seller trying to look like they had a legitimate website and they just went about it the wrong way because they were trying to get Amazon sellers to buy from them. So this is exactly what we don't want. Again, first impressions are crucial when it comes to the vetting process. Okay, so now we found a supplier, we have vetted them out successfully. Now we need to go into part three, which is contacting these wholesale suppliers. Now, when it comes to contacting these wholesale suppliers and opening up these wholesale accounts, there's going to be a few different options that you have. You have an email option where you can just shoot them an email and hope that you get a response. You can always call them, which I have found has the best response rate, but then you're also going to run into suppliers who have their own contact email on their website that they would prefer that you reach out to them from. And then you're also going to run into suppliers that have actual applications like wholesale applications on their websites that they will refer you to so you can fill them out on there. But if we're talking about just contacting suppliers, let's say we're using email. If we want to be really efficient, what you don't want to do is find one supplier and contact that one supplier over the phone. That is what I did in the beginning. And it's just not an efficient way to do it. You end up being pulled in so many different directions because now you're filling up wholesale accounts. You're waiting for the responses. You're doing all of these different things. A much more efficient way in the way that I like to do it is I like to build up a list. I build up a list in Excel or Google Sheets of let's say 50 
suppliers, for example. Once I have that big list of suppliers, I will then go ahead and email all of them. If I don't get a response in a couple of days or let's say even a week, I will then follow up with a phone call. But test out what you like and see what works for you and then go from there. Now at the end of this section, we will go and I will show you a little quick contact template that we will do on a supplier's website. But the last thing that you wanna do when it comes to emailing a supplier is send them a really lengthy email about all of the great things that you can do and how great of a seller that you are and how you can help them. Those are all great things, but in your first initial contact email, you wanna keep it short and sweet. You just wanna get a response back. That is the most important thing. We just wanna get a response back. We wanna get a wholesale application, whatever it is. But if you send a giant paragraph, nobody's gonna read that. Nobody's gonna read this lengthy paragraph from a random email that they just Scott, because they just don't have the time to do that. So keep it short and sweet, direct and to the point about who you are, what you want, and then go from there and you will get a much, much better response rate, which I'm going to show you what that looks like next. Okay. So now let's go over contacting these wholesale suppliers so that we can go and get a wholesale application and open an account with them. So this website's my OTC store. And sometimes you're going to just see it on their header. That's going to say wholesale, right? So we would click on here and it would redirect us. Sometimes you're going to see it in the very bottom and sometimes Sometimes you're going to have to email them to find out if you can open up a wholesale account with them if they are more of a, a smaller brand. But my OTC store, we're going to use this as an example. We're going to go to wholesale and then it's going to take us here and we can contact them through their portal. I personally don't like to fill out the contact information on their portal because I feel like I don't get as many responses as when I just email them directly. That's my personal experience. But if they refer me back to this page, then I will obviously fill it out. Okay, so sometimes it's gonna look like this. Sometimes you're just gonna send them an email. Like let's say uh, we go over here to their email, sales at myotcstore.com. And then we would inquire about opening up a wholesale account with them. Now, something else you might run into is this is Alliance Entertainment. Their process is different. So we would go to buy from us and they pretty much have their entire wholesale application on here or just a good chunk of it. So it tells you, you know, what products are you interested in? How much do you currently buy? Uh, who, do you who do you currently buy uh, music and games from? Uh, what formats do you sell? Preferred contact? all of your information, name of locations, type of business, all of these things. So they might have a more extensive wholesale application after this, but this is more than most uh, suppliers will give you right off the bat. So that's what this one might look like. We can also go to a site like Killcliff and you go to wholesale, you go to apply for account, and it's gonna give you their entire wholesale application right here, okay? And then you'll be able to upload it and then you'll be able to give them just a tiny bit of details and then you can go from there. But if we wanna contact a supplier, what do we say so that we can actually get a response? So we're gonna use my OTC store, for example. So we would put our name, our phone number, obviously, our email address, our company name, and then we would just type out something simple. We're not giving them our whole life story. We're not telling them how we're the best seller ever to grace this planet on Amazon and how we're gonna completely revolutionize their business. We're not doing any of that. We're just gonna contact them with a simple template and we're gonna cater it to them. Do not copy and paste it. You need to cater it to the distributor or the brand that you are reaching out to so that they can see that you have taken at least an extra step to at least get their name right. At least make sure you spelled it everything correctly. Remember, we're in the business of people. And if somebody reached out to me wanting to do supposedly so much business with me and they have a bunch of spelling errors, they never mentioned my business once, they were super generic, I'm just not even gonna respond. Use a rough guideline and then you tailor it to the specific brand or distributor that you are reaching out to. So this is about as short as sweet as you can get. Sometimes I just send it like this. Sometimes I add a little bit more detail, make it your own. Don't be afraid to try different things. It's not a very serious thing. As long as you're professional, everything is typed correctly and you're not just bombarding them with information, you'll be just fine, okay? So I just typed out, hello, I am a retailer located in XYZ and I am interested in opening a wholesale account with your company. Please let me know what information you need from me in order to open an account. I look forward to hearing from you, name, company name, and title. So this is about as bare bones as it gets, but you can also add different things. So let's say you, you wanna know about volume discounts. That's a simple question that you can add that you're not gonna overwhelm them or that you're gonna turn them off because the, the text is too long. So you can say, also, uh, do you offer um, volume discounts? So you can add that. You can also inquire about a certain product. Let's say you've been selling a product. Let's say you're coming from OA and you've been selling this product for a very long time. It's replenishable and now you found this supplier. Let's say it's in the OTC category and you wanna know if this supplier carries that product. You can also say also, I'm very interested in 
uh, product X, Y, and Z. And then you would go on to say, I'm, I'm ready to purchase a large order of this because you're already leading with an interest in a very specific product that would separate you from about 99% of people who are just opening up an account to see what they have. Another thing that I put is I put a retailer. You can also put an online retailer. You can put an e-commerce business. I would not put an Amazon seller. I like to put retailer or online retailer. Retailer tends to get the best responses, but do not put Amazon seller. So super simple template. I will leave it down below in the description so you can copy it and make it your own before you use it. Now, after you reach out to a supplier, they're gonna send you a wholesale application. You will fill that application out and then they will process it and then give you access to their wholesale pricing. Very, very simple process, but it is much more than just finding a supplier and hoping for the best. You need to find that supplier, you need to properly vet that supplier out. You need to contact them in a way that you will actually get a response. And then you open up that wholesale account. You get those lists, you put them in Scan Unlimited, and you start sifting through that inventory. Make sure you watch this video again once you start implementing so that you make sure you don't miss any steps along the way. And hopefully you found this video massively helpful to your business. If you did, I'd appreciate it if you shared it with somebody who would also find it helpful. I'd appreciate it if you liked the video, subscribe, and then also comment down below anything that you found valuable in this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.